Belfort fifth generation of viewer on their current cruising. Full use of the arena and all the obstacles as well. Demonstration of the vehicle. I can't make sure you're around later on. This afternoon, we'll have even more demonstrations for you. Well, back at the play, let alone being driven around an arena. So, it's like you find the place and you want to be Check out some of our traders, we've got plenty of food stalls and drink stalls for you. Coming up for you in just under 15 minutes, we'll have our address from the mayoress of Rugby. She came down and joined us this year.
Edwards, Colin Pass to College Point Eight to sort of transfer in reverse, and this is actually in third gear. And also, if you look, you can see just how easy it is to drive, being able to commentate and drive the vehicle at the same time. But that doesn't throw the reins at all. Very, very smooth, very easy to drive. Just speed in, 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 That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for letting me drive that. I always love the champ. As you saw, ladies and gents, so easy to drive, so smooth, so comfortable. Such a wonderful vehicle, the champ. Only produced for about four years, but like I say, almost over engineered um, for what its purpose was. Um, under that bonnet, you've got a V Series Rolls Royce engine. We've actually done a video of this vehicle, which is on YouTube. You can watch it right now, uh, where we demonstrate all of the key features of this vehicle. And we actually balance a pound coin on the engine when it's running and it doesn't even wobble. Okay, it's balanced right on its fine edge and it doesn't even wobble. Lovely to see you again there, Richard. Now then, our Land Rover's taking on our obstacle course. Let's see how they do. Up oh, and over they go. I'd say the uh, shorter wheelbase Land Rover is probably favourable here over the longer wheelbases, but it doesn't seem to be causing either of them much trouble at all. Let's sneak again to our Land Rover display. You can see coming up here is our uh, Willis Jeep. I'm interested to find out which variants we have here with us. Looking down now, is that a gas that I see? Now these are a very interesting vehicle. Let's see if we can catch up with our gas here. So have you gone through and checked that there's no S stamps on any of the bolts? Because I know some of you owners do. Yeah, everything's been checked. And it's all from Nice. Lovely stuff. What year? I haven't got a clue, so it's mine. No, it's been yours. Who have you stole it from? I stole it from a mate of mine. Yeah, yeah. Gas 69, the man car, uh, for the officers. The two-door version, you know, the bolts for the van, the bench kit. And it is about one of these for about 10 of the other versions.
Alan, how are we doing today? Fantastic, thank you. I have to say, this lawn, the water's going to come to dust. Don't worry, a little bit of dust. We can wash that off. Well, you can't if you're living down in Oxford here, though. It's my band down there. But we can dust it off. It'll be absolutely fine. Tell us more about it. What's your tip? 1972 Land Rover Ambulance, the uh, rear body built by Marshalls of Cambridge. Uh, it's in service for 26 years, uh, and I'm not talking about a bolt restoration. It's not quite finished, but we're not in 5% there. What do you mean it's not quite finished? Oh, I know what the 5% is, you need to dust it off again. Okay, yeah, 10% then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks stunning. Yeah, it's it's how long it takes to restore it? Uh, it's about three weeks. Yeah, it's not too bad. 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 It's uh, for the last few years, so yeah. I mean, from the outside, it looks brand spanking new. And do you know what? Congratulations to you for doing it, because we need more people like you to keep pieces of history like this going. Yeah, it's been good fun, I've learned a lot, and uh, it's not just uh, it's not post social since uh, the it's not post of it hasn't been back in it, so uh, I'm not sure if it's back in it. Now, in the back, I know the answer is really popular, especially with the show of the because we like to use samples. Have you kept it original ambulance step or is it camera step? So in the back capture everything's original, so all the steps are wrapped and I've back to original to keep the server all that history there. That's amazing. That's Land Rover seen this. Oh yeah. Wait till we see it. Now pull your arm off. This is its first show, is it? Have you been to Tank Truck 5 home before? Well, I have the ball with my Green Goddess fire engine, but it's the first time that it's uh, Land Rover since being restored. There we are. Do I recognise you? I knew you were in something else. But yes, this fantastic piece. Well, I'm going to show you by the answer. That is fantastic. You go out there and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Oh, 
shots in quick succession, keeping with uh, 9mm. Uh, we're now moving from pistol, and I uh, do believe this is a uh, machine gun. Submachine gun. Submachine gun, right then. So uh, let's uh, have a listen to this. Volume should be about the same, but obviously the range should come out far quicker. Over to you, Andrew. Put your hands together for me. Lovely box and bounce both on there. Oh, there then. Oh, 303, I believe, for this one. So it's about 303. You can see uh, it's much larger than the 9mm. You still need uh, one of your zoom lenses or a telescope, really, to see that from where you're standing. But uh, it's still very deadly. You can see the gun is far easier to see as well here as well. So this is uh, a 303 rifle, I do believe, this one. This is a, a bolt action rifle now, I'm going to stand as well as the way because you will certainly hear the difference in the, uh, the band that comes from this gun here. Alright, so, we've got it all ready, here we go. This will fire a few rounds per second. second. Yes. Uh, so, so it's going to go through that magazine very quickly indeed. See so if you can count how many rounds are uh, fired off it. Up to you, sir. Go and take a look in position there. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to have a 
to the largest part of the wall.
So you can have a look. This is the engine that you can find in 432, which is just sat just the other side of this vehicle. So you get an idea of just how vast the engine is, both in size and weight and power.
things is big and heavy, not something you want to rush. Making it nice and easy. Putting the engine back into the centre of the 434, the recovery variant of the 432, which you can see just in front of it. And chains nice and slack and back in place. Ladies and gents, those of you around the arena, please put your hands together for our recovery demonstration there. Just want to warm up their engines and get their eyes and tell you very quickly about these two vehicles here. Of course, part of the Alvis Fighter Vehicle Society collection, these two. This demonstration has been performed all over the world. These uh, two vehicles here, uh, weighing at around 7 to 8 tonnes each, uh, but the ground pressure is equal to that of you ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, very light on their feet, the weight distributed very well across those tracks, which means they don't dig in at all. Also, they've got as many gears forward as they have back, and uh, originally these would have been fitted with a Jaguar petrol engine, like we would have found in sports cars at the time. Made them a bit thirsty, but also made them very quick as well indeed, so uh, could do over 60 miles an hour, believe it or not, these vehicles, and they could do that going forwards or backwards. So it's very, very light, they're not really designed to uh, take much in terms of artillery fire, they're more designed to get out of there as quickly as possible. So as our drivers come by, ladies and gents, the vehicles come by, please do give them a very warm welcome, make sure you give them a nice big wave, a big cheer, and maybe a little, little clap as they come by. The more you cheer them on, the better this display will be. Side, just a few feet between the two of them. Andrew in reverse made a full use of those reversing mirrors. They actually got so close to previous years that they flipped each other's mirrors, which is the most interesting and very interesting. Now, hard on the right, they're both sitting down. Those 
gears and the power. Now then, watch this, ladies and gents. Mick is starting to lag behind Mick. He's going to have to knock down everybody. He's taking the shortcut. He's in the danger zone. That's just the pace of what's coming up for you. Andrew taking up the inside line there, really flying away down. On the inside line, getting that power down, and Mick having to short shift down to catch up with Andrew. They're kicking up plenty of dust as well. Andrew's now in the danger zone again. Andrew's there cutting the corner into a dance zone, he's also having to try and catch up, but Andrew's gone wide. He's slowed down a little bit, this is allowing Mick to catch up. Looks like they're lining up to go straight through the centre, ladies and gents, have your cameras at the ready. up in the air, we're not going to let that get away are we? Right then!
So at the top here we have got the Axis forces. They pushed forward about three weeks ago and took the Allied forces trenches here. Now if you look further down the arena, you can see our half track moving up. This is one of our Allied forces that have now regrouped to try and recover the trenches which they lost about three odd weeks ago now. German forces there in their half track doing the reconnaissance. Keeping a close eye on the ground that they have taken a few weeks ago. Looking further down now, if you look right down towards where the mayoress earlier accidentally blew a great big hole in our carp pond at the bottom, you can see an allied forces there. T-16 APC there, coming up, doing some reconnaissance there, the allied forces, trying to recover their ground. trying to get back towards the trenches which they lost a few weeks ago, those loud bangs coming from the air support that they have recovered now, coming towards the Axis forces. The Axis forces here are going to be keen to hold on to the ground that they made up a few weeks ago, holding on to those trenches. So fire now coming back up towards the Axis forces. The Axis forces keeping a very close eye on the Allies' activity there. You can see now they are starting to push forward from afar. I'm interested to see who is going to bring the battle to who. Whether we're going to see the Axis forces move forward, whether they're going to stay dug in into the trenches which they took from the Allied forces. Whether they're going to be a bit more assertive, a bit more aggressive and move forward. You can see our allied forces here coming together, using the vehicles as protection to advance forward. Half track very much at the forefront of this. The Axis forces using that for protection as well. That Pack 38 anti tank gun there being used as well against the Allied forces, trying to keep them at bay, but still they push forward. So the vehicles there in the centre, you've got the MA Greyhounds coming forward. Bringing back there now, taking a look at the Axis forces are really starting to bring a lot more artillery fire forward. But still the Allies keep pushing forward here. Close to the gap of the ground between the two forces. The uh, Allies pushing forward here to recover the ground. The Axis forces are just in front of the Heavy fire now. The 
I'm interested to see what the Axis forces are going to do here. Are they going to stay in their trenches or are they going to come out? Are they going to release those trenches and start coming forward? You can see that the Allies now have moved right forward towards that half track. Allies advancing forward, many of them still using a few of the vehicles for cover. Also now using the smoke there to cover their advances. So we'll be blocking the view of the active forces up here in the trenches. Effectively that will be firing blind into the smoke and into the fog. Heavy fire now being exchanged between the two forces. The Allies are being pushed forward. Now, I believe I can see is that Bazooka Rocket T being handled by one of the forces? <laughs> the Allies are now really bringing the fight to the Axis forces. Progressing forward using the mortar rounds for cover. Now diving behind the trenches. Some of those trenches that they would have lost just a few weeks ago. Reloading their rifles over on the far side there. You can see a couple of British troops flanking down the one side. And now interesting that the Allied forces using that half track as protection as the Axis forces were using it earlier. Using it for protection, using it for cover. Mortar rounds are still being fired there, adding a little bit of protection there, trying to keep the axes at bay. So the Allied forces here by far the addresses. in close quarters now you can see both the Axis and Allied forces now are getting very close to one another. They've got the ground in between the two that's going to offer very little protection. The trenches are holding both of them back. The Allied forces there seem to be Regrouping, coming up with their plan to uh, advance forward. Very difficult to do as there is absolutely no cover in the train between the two. Again, using the vehicle as protection, the Allied forces bringing it forward just behind troops there that are in that trench. You can see just the helmets poking out over the top. Now the Allies 
Bobby forward here. trenches in the last few weeks but they lost these to the Axis forces just a few weeks ago. More Allied forces coming in to join. They really are progressing forward well here, it has to be said. But the Axis forces are still holding strong, it has to be said as well. Let's see who our victor is going to be. Can the Allied forces regain the ground that they lost? Two of the five, I believe, five trenches up at the top here. Three remain. The Axis forces really are under pressure here. The Allies are literally knocking right on their door. Only one trench remains. Some warning shots fired there, we've got surrender from two of the three, now the third machine gun nest here, the third trench here. Uh, looks like they have been cleared, and the whistle there, the signal of the final shot being fired. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for all of our reenactors. Here in the trenches we have the Allied forces here together. Uh, they lost these trenches to the Axis forces a few weeks ago. They reclaimed them yesterday. But now coming under fire is our scout vehicle. And that reconnaissance mission down there has gone horribly wrong for the Allied forces. They've literally run straight into the Axis forces there. Retreating back up towards the Axis, sorry, the Allied forces up top here, away from the Axis forces down there. <laughs> Turning coming safely back to the defence turn here to get ourselves in position. Now, if we look back down the arena here, we can see that the Axis force has been very aggressive, having lost these trenches yesterday from the Allies. than the Allied forces were yesterday. They really are coming They're coming in very hard. They seem to regain those trenches that they lost yesterday. We can 
see on our half track here is our Here we can see them debussing of that half track using the for protection as well. Clear the blood zone! Firing! Now the Allied forces there in the trenches using a bazooka over to the active forces, but still they remain the aggressors. Plenty of shots being fired between the two sides as the Allies try hard to hold on to the trenches that they lost not that long ago and only just recovered yesterday afternoon. It seems that some of the actors have lost some numbers, but now we can see they are starting to progress forward on foot. The debris the trenches that have been created in our arena for cover. Plenty of shots being exchanged between the two sides. Slow break in the forest, they regroup. Going back to the armoured vehicle and fire now being exchanged between the two sides. Well, the Axis forces are going right up against the side of the trench there. I'd say yesterday's battle, these have far been more aggressive. The Axis forces here are keen to rejoin their lost ground. The Allies are not going to give it up easy. Tried to progress forward. Now the axe is really moving forward here. Handy up! Handy up! Handy up! Handy up! Stand! Rouse! 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 Stand! Rouse! Rouse! Stand! And the axe is there. Come here! Come to here! Debunkering the. Uh, Trench there of the Allies, they've lost one of their central trenches. Hands in the air. It looks like there is only a small group of Allies left now over at the far side of the arena, but I dare say that their time is here. So they're searching here for any explosives, any weapons. The Allies are now starting to fight back. They're getting quite physical with one another here. <laughs> if you've ever wondered what it's like to camp over at tanks, drop some firepower after the beer tents, then uh, there you are. I dare say here. And the whistle shows the end of battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for all of our reenactors here today. Here we see the Allied forces doing a bit of reconnaissance on their way down. 
towards the bottom of the arena to keep an eye on those Axis forces. So the two Axis vehicles down there in position. Not sure the Allies have spotted them just yet. The scenario that we're seeing here is right towards the end of the water. You can see fierce fire being exchanged between the two. It's been a very long four and a half years. See here the Axis forces making a very aggressive pull forward in the armoured vehicle there. They come right forward making use of these new trenches uh, towards the centre of our arena. <laughs> See the half track is now beginning to move forward as well. Very aggressive dance tactics from the Axis forces. A lot of fire being exchanged between the two. You can hear the explosions going up. This is the S4. just behind me there, this is the S4 coming in here, the access force is still coming forward, highly aggressive towards them, trying to regain the ground that they lost. The access force is using both of those vehicles for as well. There. An immense amount of fire being exchanged between the two. Keep firing! shouting just to keep firing. The exchange of fire here between the two is a mess. The Axis forces now deployed, smoke screen helps with their advance forward. Huge explosion still going on behind me over here as they bring forward help from there. The German forces, the Axis here, using that half track for protection here. Some of our Allied troops are advancing forward, but being caught in the crossfire. Sadly, they are the latest of the many lives that were lost during the war. Another smoke grenade going into the centre between our two forces here, between the Allies and the Axis. Offering the Axis forces here with the wind blowing down towards them, some cover for them to advance forward. Through the fog we can see one of the Axis forces here moving forward using the smoke for cover and now moving forward right towards the trenches and unfortunately
Strong fire still being exchanged between the two sides. The Allies and the Axis here really are in the... Ask yourself, one of the most aggressive battles we've seen this weekend. The most aggressive battle we've seen so far. Allies are calling for ceasefire. Holding his helmet aloft there. And the leader of the Axis forces doing the same here, walking towards one another. And wide. The two coming together. Saluting one another and a shake of the hand. They have called it cease. They agree this is a needless loss of life. Ladies and gentlemen, I can I ask you please to put your hands together for our reenactors?
Yeah.